Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Hillsdale Church. Will you stand as we begin our time of worship together? Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you so much for your presence. We invite you to make yourself known to us this morning, wherever we're at. Wherever we're at physically, wherever we're at emotionally, and even spiritually, we invite you to make your presence known. We come here this morning to give you glory and honor and praise. We know, looking back in our lives, that you have been so good, that you've loved us so well. So we come to worship you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
bring your addictions come lay them down at the foot of the cross jesus is waiting god to love the world
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Let's sing that again. The Lord bless you. shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.
Amen. At this time, you can be seated, and I'd like to invite Christy and all the children up for children's time. Good morning. How is everyone today? Are you doing good? You're so we have a quiet bunch this morning. What are we celebrating today? Does anybody know? Father's Day. We're celebrating our fathers, our grandpas, all the important men in our lives, right? Dads are all different, but they're so special. And I brought some things that remind me of some fathers that I know. Let's see if they remind you of someone you know. What's this? A hammer. Some dads like to fix broken things around the house. Do you know a dad like that? Some dads break more things than they fix. That's true. I know a dad like that. What about, let's see what else I got in here. What is, it is. What is this used for? You're right. You're right. A spatula for grilling, right? Do you know a dad that likes to cook and grill? I do. But do you know a dad who likes to eat more than he grills? I do. Sometimes sometimes they like to do that too. What about, oh, I know you're going to recognize this. The remote. the remote. Does the dad like to have the remote all the time? Yeah. yeah. At my house, I know dads like that too. Do you? Do you ever get to use the remote? Sometimes. He knows a dad. He's saying he knows a dad like that. <laughs> you're whispering it because you see your dad up there. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he likes to grill. He's telling me he likes to grill. Well, dads are a special group of men that we are celebrating today. They do a lot of important things for us. And just like God, our heavenly father, their most important job is to always love us. They always love us. And our heavenly father not only watches over us and loves us and cares for us, but he does that for our dads too. So I'm happy we get a chance to thank them today. So make sure you thank your dad and give him a big hug and tell him how much you love him. And we're just so grateful that they are there to take care of us. On our way out, if you see any men, give them a high five to tell them thank you for all that they do for us. And we have a little gift out on the Welcome Center I want the dads to grab on their way out. What's that? Yeah, so grab one of those. It's a little thank you from us. All right, we're going to say your prayer, and we'll head over to Power Hour. Are you ready? You're praying here. Did you want to pray this morning? Okay, you can. Heavenly Father, thank you for our dads. Can you say it? You being shy now? Thank you for our church family. Help us to just show all of our dads how much we love and care for them today, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And today. Thank you. <laughs> All righty, kids. Have fun in Power Hour. A quiet bunch, indeed. Welcome to Hillsdale Church again. My name is Noah Elliott, and I'm the Director of Youth and Young Adults Ministry here at Hillsdale Church. And I have two announcements. First of all, we've said it already, but happy Father's Day um, to any fathers out there. Uh, I actually would love to just take a second to just bless you guys. So could we just bow our heads and, as I pray for all the fathers in the building and listening on the live stream. Lord, thank you so much for, um, yeah, just what a gift it is to have a father. I ask that um, you just bless all the fathers in this room, all the ones listening on the live stream right now, and just soften their hearts to feel so celebrated and so loved and valued by their children and, and um, yeah, just their family around them. Bless every father right now in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you guys. I have a, one announcement before we read the scripture. Actually, let me go ahead and give you the scripture for those who have the Bibles if you wanted to start flipping. So we're going to be reading out of Luke chapter 10, and we're starting at verse 21. Again, that's Luke chapter 10, verse 21. And while you're flipping there, I just have one announcement. Our VBS is coming up. That is July 17th 
through the 21st. It is a Sunday through Thursday, every evening at 6.30 to 8.30, I believe. It is so much fun. So you, you, if you know any children or um, that is interested in signing up, you can sign up in the lobby or you can sign up on the website as well. We're also looking for volunteers, as many as we can get. It is a lot to have to watch over hundreds of kids. So we need all the help we can get. So if you're interested in signing up, you can, I believe you can either contact me or Christy and we'd love to get you plugged in. But it is um, such an incredible week where so many children's lives are changed and some of them introduced to Jesus for the first time. So it's a really incredible opportunity to serve and uh, to be a part of this week. Okay, so we're in Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 21. It says this, At that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then turning to the disciples, Jesus said to them privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that we have something to hold in our hands and to dive into for the rest of our life. As we prepare our hearts for tithes and offerings, I just ask that you um, open our ears Um, As Jerry is getting ready to give the message, I ask that you, yeah, just open our ears to hear what you have for us this morning. We open ourselves up to you, Jesus. I ask that you bless the tithes and offerings and thank you in advance for all you're going to do through these tithes and offerings this week. In Jesus' name, amen. As the ushers would come forward, we're going to begin our tithes and offerings.
Gracious. Thank you, Molly. Great job. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Hillsdale. We're glad you're here to worship with us this morning, to lift up the name of Christ Jesus as we come together in person. And those of you who are joining us online, we welcome you as well. Um, God has blessed us with a wonderful temperature this morning <laughs> I, I said to someone this morning at the coffee machine I, that is a gift on Father's Day isn't it to just walk out and enjoy the low humidity and the beautiful temperature what a what a blessed day it led us to conversations about air conditioning and days before air conditioning and one of my fondest memories about my daddy was that he worked for uh, Duke Power Company when we were growing up and he traveled a lot. So he had a company car, started out with a company truck, but he ended up graduating to a company car. And the very first air conditioner we ever had in our family was in daddy's company car. And it wasn't uh, a factory air conditioner. It was one of these retrofit aftermarket deals that sat in the middle. Um, and I think maybe Daddy installed it because the condensation ran into the floorboard. <laughs> so you couldn't, you couldn't ride with the air conditioner on long because you'd flood the car. <laughs> but Sunday afternoons, Daddy would say, let's go for a ride. And boy, in the summertime, that was the best thing, just to get in the car and go for a ride in the air conditioner. Do our children know how spoiled they are? I don't believe they do. I don't believe they do. Air condition is a blessing, and I put it right up there with running water in a house, I tell you. Well, we have been at annual conference this week. Tori is still at annual conference. Uh, for those of you who aren't Methodist, didn't grow up Methodist, annual conference is what we do in the Methodist church, where we go once a year to receive our appointments as pastors, and uh, we talk about the state of the church, and we vote on budgets for the institutional connectional church and missions and all of that. And so I'm happy to report to you that Tori and I are reappointed for another year here at Hillsdale. I hope that's good for you. <laughs> that's what we wanted, and we're, we're very pleased about it. I, I'll never forget the very first annual conference I attended as a pastor. I was on my way up to Lake Genalaska, which is on the other side of Asheville near Maggie Valley and Waynesville. It's beautiful up there. 
But it's a, it's a long drive. It takes you about three hours to get up there. And so on my first drive up to Lake June, Alaska, the very first annual conference, um, we have to get there a little bit early for the clergy sessions, a day earlier. So it's around lunchtime, and I decide to get off and, and grab me a McDonald's cheeseburger. Uh, my children are telling me, Happy Father's Day. Let me cut this thing off. <laughs> um, so I get off at one of the exits at a McDonald's, and, you know, you, you go to McDonald's because the food is fast, right? It is fast service. You get in and out. Not particularly... Um, Want good for you, but it's fast food. And so uh, I decide I'm going to take a break and stretch my legs. I go inside. And the line at McDonald's is rather long. I don't know what in the world is wrong with this particular McDonald's, but I'm behind this real giant of a man. He's about six foot five. I would say he's at least 280 pounds, a big fella. And so he's standing in line in front of me, and somebody else is in front of him. And we're trying to be patient and wait, and it doesn't look like the staff is in any hurry. We just, it just doesn't seem to correlate with uh, priorities. And so the guy in front of me is frustrated, and he turns around and he looks at me and he says, Hey, buddy, can you see me? I said, Yes, sir. I see you. He says, why can't they see me? <laughs> and so he was quite frustrated. And needless to say, we eventually received our uh, happy meals. But it took a while to get through the line at McDonald's, which is not what you expect. And it was as if we were invisible to the staff that was waiting on us. <laughs> Today, we're looking at a particular passage of Scripture where Jesus says to his disciples, you are so blessed that you see me. You are so incredibly special in all of history. The prophets, everyone wanted this moment. But I want you to know, blessed are you because you have seen me. And you know me. And then they go on to do more work and more ministry. And so it's just one of those kind of passing moments that uh, you might not read too much into it, but it really is jam-packed with God's expression of God's self and how blessed we are as we're able as God's people, to see God, to witness God, to see Jesus, to embrace Jesus, to live with Jesus. It, it, is, it is such a privilege that sometimes we really kind of take for granted and, and don't think about it too much. But God has blessed us with God's presence as his people. Today I want to talk about in relationship to this ability we have to see God, I want to talk about how awesome a responsibility that is for us to be God's representatives and to, to do that in the correct way. I think the biggest tragedy in anyone's life is to have God present, standing in one's midst, and not be aware of it. Do you remember the story in the Bible where Jesus is riding into Jerusalem the last week of his life? It's the very first day that he makes his way into Jerusalem, and he tells his disciples to go get a, a colt and bring it, and he sits on the colt, and he rides in, and we wave palm branches and celebrate uh, Jesus coming in, we say all sorts of things. Do, do you know, uh, the Bible really doesn't speak of this, but um, there isn't much expression from Jesus while he's doing this. 
You would think he'd be pointing, be waving at people and kind of, yes, I'm glad you're here and it's me and I'm glad maybe that you see me. But none of that's going on. Matter of fact, what the Bible does say, the only thing the Bible says about Jesus in this episode is that once he is in Jerusalem, he begins to weep. He begins to weep. Why? Why do you think? I think as a pastor studying that particular passage, I believe that Jesus wept because of the lack of understanding. Because of the misunderstanding of the people who were celebrating his entry into Jerusalem. I, you know, I, I've entitled today's message to you, The Big Shift. The Big Shift. And I believe we need to make a shift in how we present Jesus as the body of Christ. To the world around us, to ourselves, to our families, to our neighbors. In Bible study, when we study in disciple or any class I teach, the very first thing that I explain to the class is that when you're reading scripture and you're trying to hear God's voice from that expression, you need to ask yourself three things. You read the scripture and then you say to yourself, what does it say about God? The first question. The second question, what does it say about me? And the third question, what does this say about me and God together? So think about those questions and, and how they relate to the text. I, the shift that I believe we need to make as people of faith, even with our Bible study maybe, is it is important to read scripture and think about how, what was this saying about who I am as a human being? But I think the shift needs to take place in that we need to spend a whole lot more time and a whole lot more energy and a whole lot more discernment on the very first question. What does this say about God? Because honestly, most of us approach the scriptures and say, what's this got to do with me? There's where the shift needs to take place. It's not about us. This book is God's revelation of God's self. If we don't ask the question and kind of linger and stay on that point of what is God saying about God, then we will miss God's presence. We will miss God's will. The, the other kind of shift that I believe this makes in our lives as people of faith, you know, for years and years, I have been your pastor, and I've asked this question more often than not, how can I help grow the church? How can I grow our church? I believe it's the wrong question. It's the wrong question for me. It's the wrong question for you. We need to shift away from that question. Just like we're shifting away from what's this say about me to what does God want our church to be? What does God want us to look like? How does God want us to behave? So rather than say, how can we grow Hillsdale Church? I believe our question needs to be, what is God doing in our community? What is God doing around us? And if we spend our time and our energy and our devotion and our enthusiasm and our work tending to that question, not only will things change in the life of our church, it will change in our life.
personally, corporately, the body of Christ? What is God doing in our community? Okay, pastor, how do you do that? How do you really come to grips with what God is doing in Hillsdale or Davie County or Forsyth County or Oak Valley? How do we, how do we come to understand what God is doing around us so that we can react to that and be who God wants us to be. Well, I, I have, as usual, three things for you to consider. The first thing to consider for all of us is that we, individually, as well as a church, need to spend time with God. If you want to know what God is up to, you need to spend time with God. And how do we do that? Well, you're doing it right now, aren't you? You're worshiping. You are celebrating God. I don't know why else you're here, unless that's why you're here. You're here to celebrate God. Now, you could be here as well because of Um, your desperate need for God. But it is worship. Regardless. Whether it's a desperate need or whether it's a celebration. So worship, the word of God. Listen, if you want to know what God thinks, what God wants, what is God's desire, you have to read your Bible. And you have to ask yourself, what is this saying about God? Not about me. What is it saying about God? And let God speak to you. This is the way God speaks to us. I get a little, little, little bit leery. I mentioned this in Bible study this morning. I get a little bit leery when people come up to me and say, I, God told me. <laughs> now, I... I Listen, I understand the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is God, and I understand God guiding us and directing us, but when someone comes up to me and says, I have been given this special dispensation from God, it makes me just a little bit cautious because I want to know, does it line up with God's voice and God's desire? that comes from God's word. We have to spend time with God. We spend time with God in worship. We spend time with God in God's word. We spend time with God in prayer. We're speaking to God. God is with us and God is present in that prayer as we pray. The second thing we need to do to to recognize what God is doing in our community is we have to value the things that God values. Would you agree with that? I mean, it's important for us as God's people to understand and know what God values. So what does God value within our community? What does God value a mile away from Hillsdale Church? 10 miles away from Hillsdale Church, halfway around the world from Hillsdale Church. What does God value? You know, as tough as that seems to be as a question, it is so easy to answer. Let me give you the answer of what God values. Go read the Sermon on the Mount. This is Jesus's best work Matthew chapter 5 through 7 and here is how Jesus begins this sermon he begins by talking about those whom he values blessed are the poor blessed are the poor you want to know what God values he values the poor That's a little difficult for us, isn't it, in our community? Because when I ride around our community, I don't see many poor people. 
Well, maybe, but not on the outside. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who mourn. God values those who grieve, those who struggle with grief. Marianne, I'm going to give this away. Marianne Hartman is going to lead a grief share um, course again soon. I can't think of a better way to value what God values than for us as a church family to meet people in their grief and to love them because that's what God values. Blessed are they who mourn. Blessed are the humble. How many humble people do you know? Boy, it's hard to find humble people. I remember Mac Davis's song. Y'all won't remember. Oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. <laughs> Our world likes to put that out there, don't they? All you got to do is go to Facebook, and you will see a lot of perfect people, won't you? I thought that'd get an Amen. God values the humble. God values and told us at the opening of God's sermon, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice. God values justice. Blessed are those who are merciful. Blessed are those whose hearts are pure. Blessed are those whose hearts seek peace. Blessed are those who do the right thing. Go read the Beatitudes. Listen to what God has to say to you as you're reading them. Because listen, that is what God values. Those. And that is who we should value as well. If we want to know where God's at in our community, all we got to do is find those people. And be connected. Some of them are you. Many of them reside here. They are certainly all around us. We have to value what God values. And, and finally, my third point, we have to spend time with God. We have to value what God values. And we have to celebrate God. We have to celebrate God. Let me, let me give you a little background of what happened here in Luke 10. The, the passage that Noah just read to us uh, comes on the heels of Jesus uh, telling his disciples to go out and solicit 70 disciples within his group of people who are listening to him and send them out to do his work. And they do that with great success. Jesus, God, gives them direction and tells them how to do what God wants to do in that community. And they go out and boy, they come back energized because things went really well. Listen to what happens just right before the scripture that was read to you today. The 70 returned with joy saying, Lord... In your name, even demons submit to us. And Jesus said to him, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, nevertheless, don't get all wrapped up in that, Jesus says. Don't. Rejoice in this, that you have that power. 
that spirits submit to you, but rejoice, celebrate that your names are written in heaven. That's what we celebrate, that our names are written in heaven. Not that we have power. (laughs) Couldn't you just see one of those 70 coming in and saying, boy, did you see that one guy that was coming at me and was filled with a demon and I said Jesus to him and he fell flat on his face and started puking? I love that. Couldn't you just see them celebrating what they had found the power, the might, the influence, the magic, the supernatural that they now possess, and it would easily, easily go to their heads. And before you know it, they're superstars. They have something that all the world wants. You want this power and influence that I've got. See, it's the very same thing, by the way, that the people wanted when they were waving palm branches to the king of kings and lord of lords that was riding into Jerusalem that very first week of holy week as we know it. And yet Jesus began to weep. He started crying at that sight because God was standing in the midst of God's people and they did not see him. They didn't get it. They missed it entirely. And God wept. What we need to do, we need to spend time with God, we need to value what God values, and we need to celebrate that our names and the names of those who come to a relationship as we love all people into a relationship with Jesus Christ are now written in the book of eternal life. That's our celebration. That's how we come to grips. That's how we know that we know we're doing God's will. And we're at a place where God wants us to be and God is always present. But do we see him? Can God be this huge figure standing right in front of us and we miss it altogether? What a tragedy that would be. What a tragedy it would be for the church to be trying to grow itself and miss Jesus in the process. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Would you stand as we sing our last song? my
receive this benediction, this blessing, as we go into our community and try to find what God is up to among us. May we go with the strength of the Holy Spirit. May we go listening to God's direction for each of us in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our communities. May we go in God's strength and all God's people said, amen. Have a great Father's Day. We'll see you soon.